Hey guys, I'm currently standing in UT right now. I've traveled halfway across the country just to be here. Um, I'm currently standing in, if you can see, it's really bright. Um, I'm currently standing in Stagman Park right now. I didn't even know this place had a name. I've just finished my tour of this neighborhood. I just filmed some insert shots and I'm about to end my day here. Um, there was supposed to be some good food near here, but um, it's been closed, so just gotta take a walk down here. I actually came from this way, but figured it would be good to show you um, a shot of me walking down this way. Um, now the reason why I picked this spot, besides the fact that it's on my way out, is that I thought it was apt that this isn't UT Park at all, it's always named something else. And that the school in front of me right here, if you can see, again, it's extremely bright. It's called Crunchy Primary School, and that's the school where I was at. Um, my friend lived in this neighborhood. I live on the other side of the neighborhood, actually, about 20 minutes walk from here. Um, so this place is extremely small, actually. I completed my tour in about 40 minutes, really. And that's including filming all the insert shots that you're about to see in this video. And as a matter of fact, as I travel down here, you'll see that there is um, the stadium down this way. Um, you'll see that in the shots as well. But if you look at this park, it's extremely quiet and empty. Um, there's literally nothing here. It's a very small park. You can walk across it in like five minutes. And On the internet, Americans frequently announce which state and city they live in to highlight where they come from. I've seen it so much that I think I know the abbreviations better than some Americans themselves. I think it's not so much just that they are proud of their place of living, but that it also paints a rough picture of who they are and what people should expect of them. You can see this better in exaggerated, stereotypical memes, like Texans being proud of their barbecue and gun cultures, Florida often seen as a place for the crazy people, and um, Alabama. Let's not talk about that. In Singapore, we don't have states or cities. The country is the city. While metro system provides a great guideline for where places start and end, major hubs like Pongo, Amokyo, and Paya Leba are distinct places on their own. They are huge transport nodes, with a large amount of residents, big malls, renowned food options, and other accommodations. And along with that, we have our own stereotypes too. Yishun is our Florida, Bukit Timah is where our rich people go, and Tampines is the young and cool place. I really think where you end up on the metro map does define who you grow up to be. Even, and perhaps especially, if you end up in a place that completely lacks an identity. Places so devoid of anything interesting that you can live your entire life in Singapore and never even consider to visit. Welcome to UT. It's an extremely small neighborhood where you can walk from one end to the other in about 30 minutes. It technically does not exist either. Its roads and most of its landmarks are named of the Chua Kang, which is only a 15 minute walk away. There is literally no reason to visit this place, not voluntarily anyway. It has an army camp, and I think that's what most visitors are here for. It also has a serviceable mall, UT Point, but it does not offer much beyond the usual chains. A Caesarea, a KFC, and an 18 Chefs. There's no famous eateries around either. There's two stalls of dugout that might be of note, as well as a curious looking diner, but I doubt you'll be making a one and a half hour journey just for them. What about green spaces? There are a number of parks that provide sporting opportunities, but neither are grand or impressive enough to warrant spending a day at. There's a sports complex, but it is under renovation. I vaguely remember spending some time here when I was younger. It had a really big but squeaky and ill lubricated slide, so I think the upgrade is well called for. Another place under renovation is the Limbang Shopping Centre, where I have clearer and fonder memories of. It's probably the best thing that the neighbourhood has to offer. It has a wet market, tuition centre, as well as a number of old school shops selling all sorts of brightly coloured toys and clutter. Walking around here, I don't think anything else has changed honestly. My old school looks the same. They seem to have cut down some trees and added shelters along the main road, but other than that, it really seems like the entire district has been frozen in time. The question is, is this a unique situation? Down the north-south line is Admiralty, a place I've also never visited. I've passed by it dozens of times, but never once thought to stop by. It's a really similar place to UT, but there is a key difference and that's its neighbour. Woodlands is one stop away from Admiralty, and it's evident in the fact that the roads are named after the hub, as well as its various landmarks. 
There are also many bus routes passing by on its way to the bigger neighborhood, sometimes going as far as Sambawang, another big hub. And this is something really cool. There's a new development called Kampong Emeraldi, which is a really big hawker center, and I think it's the neighborhood's pride. On the other side of Woodlands is Marceling, which is similar to Emeraldi as well. There isn't much here, but it does have a ludicrous concentration of hawker centers, including the one in Marceling Mall. It also has the Woodlands Polyclinic, which I remember waiting in for hours on end. So, by being in close proximity to a major hub, Woodlands, these places managed to get by. You see, neighbors are extremely important, and that's because the whole of Singapore cannot be comprised exclusively of Woodlandsers, just like how the whole of America cannot be multiple Washingtons. But having enough of them to influence their nearby places is enough, and that's basic city planning principles. Other examples in Singapore of smaller neighborhoods benefiting from bigger ones include Clementine and Chinese Garden, Lavender, Coven, and Yochuka and Katsip. So who are Yuti's neighbors? The industrial hearts Sungai Kado and Kranji are unlikely to lend any prestige. Is big brother Chachukang the other way? It's a nice neighborhood with a decent sized mall, great food options, and a big bus interchange. But it really doesn't compare to Woodlands and how it influences both Marsling and Emeraldi. On a similar note is Bukit Panjang, a 20 minute bus ride away. It also has a mall and a bus interchange. But again, it does not seem to influence UT enough. To me, these transport hubs serve to bring residents of both places away from where they live, rather than drawing visitors closer. They do not have any special attraction that other hubs have. So I will say that UT is unique. It's situated far enough for any place significant, and it's nothing of its own to be proud of. Is that so bad though? When I was younger and lived here, I absolutely hated the place. It was a chore to get anywhere, especially since the downtown line did not exist back then, and breakdowns were more frequent. Places like Amokyo and Jurong East was as far as I would go, and even then it felt like a cross-country run. Today, getting here still took me almost an hour, but it is a nice place to visit. I enjoyed my walk around here. There wasn't much to do, nor any place to get a good bite, but the difference in pace I felt here was strangely relaxing. Despite the towering HDBs, it still felt like a traditional kampong. There's no crowds of people gathering or moving about, no long lines of cars streaming in and out, and there's barely any noise at all. In fact, most of the people just seem to head straight home after spending their day outside. Maybe you guys should drop by and let me know what you guys think. Is this place unique? Does it deserve an upgrade? Or is it fine as it is? Certainly, there's no other place like UT.